Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I do some wireless surveys recently, indoor and outdoor, and I use the NetAlly AirCheck G2 with the AirMapper software in the field. And I thought it'd be kind of interesting to share my reaction experience, tips, tricks, that kind of thing. You also have to keep in mind that you don't need this specific tool to do this. All the methodology, tips and tricks I talk about today, you can use your phone for, a tablet, a laptop, any wireless device will do. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing is, I just want to review the details of what I was up to. So I used this NetAlly AirCheck G2 with the AirMapper. I did this outdoor survey, uh, and like I said, I thought it'd be helpful to share some stuff. What I did for the outdoor survey was I just went to Google Maps. I just snipped the drawing, the map, the whatever you want to call it, the satellite view of the property. And I used that as reference as I walked around. So in this case, I can import the image right into the AirCheck, the Air Mapper software. You can also do this with your laptop, or you can just do what I used to do, and that's simply take a floor plan or the same snippet and just write like A, B, C, D, E. And then on the back side of it, or an accompanying sheet of paper, you can A equals, and you had negative 72, negative 80, negative 50, whatever. If whatever you have gives you signal to noise information, great, put that in there. Whatever you have, even, even, even if you don't have any of those numeric values, three bars, one bar, two bars, uh, ping times, 300 milliseconds versus two milliseconds, iperf, you know, five megabits per second versus 100 megabits per second, all that kind of stuff you can put on that same reference, all right? So in the initial um, link live view, this is what I get. So I'm going to just take a step backwards now just so we don't skip anything. So I have my air check. I walk around. I do my thing. And then when I'm done, the neat thing about the air check is I just click save. And on the save screen, there's an option for link live. This is their cloud. Their, um, I'm going to just say, yeah, it's cloud. It's cloud storage. And it processes the information for you. And then you just simply go to the portal, log in. And this is exactly what you see. Again, if you had this printed out on a piece of paper, you can easily draw out the direction in which you were walking, which is actually, uh, it's quite important. You'll see in another slide or two why that's important. And then in this case, I've got colors, but again, you could simply just label this A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three. I also had examples where I've done kind of like sectors, if you will, a sector A, sector B, Northwest, Southwest, that kind of thing, just to chop it up. The other thing with this specific tool is when you do have an image and you do import it, there's something called a calibration. So I can take a scale, in this case I can use this scale here, or if I knew a parking spot was six feet wide, I can tell the software this is six feet wide. And then the software will rescale the diagram accordingly. And that's kind of important to get out of the way. So now that I've got this in the software, this is showing me everything. So this is not for a specific SSID. This is for a negative 100. So at first glance, it looks cool, but it's not very helpful. So I need to filter this down. So that's what I did. So I filtered it for the SSID that I need, and I changed the threshold at the bottom of the screen. So I changed it to negative 75, and I used the SSID. I X'd it out for you, of course. Uh, but you get the idea. Now, this value down here, this negative 75, this is always what I get asked. How do you figure that out? Well, whatever you happen to use, you know, laptop, you know, tablet, phone, whatever the wireless device is that you're using, basically I will do a test and like ping or file transfer, use the application, whatever it happens to be. And whenever that application starts to suffer, whenever my throughput, if I did an iperf, gets to be quite poor, then I note that value, and then that's what I use for my reference. While I'm standing there with my phone or my tablet, and I know things are not good, I then look at the air check, and I say, what did it record? And if it said neg 75, I know my experience is translates to a neg 75 on this tool. That is incredibly important. Some tools allow you to calibrate, so the tool looks like your phone or your scanner or your tablet or whatever it happens to be. And that way you can properly uh, pick that threshold, which will change what the way the map looks. So you can see before the map was entirely, you know, yellows and greens and all that kind of jazz. And now as soon as I choose negative 75, it's gone gray. 
Now, if you really pay attention, you'll see as I walk away from the building, it goes gray, but the exact same spot walking towards the building is not gray. And that's because my body was blocking the signal and I lost a couple of dBs, just enough, that now it's, you know, worse than neg 75. Whereas here, I'm facing the building and there's nothing in front of me, so therefore, everything looks good. So this is why we need to know the direction in which we're walking, because sometimes things like that happen. Even over here, you know, I'm walking this way, and guess what? It looks like I'm in range, because I was holding the tester in my left hand. See that? As I walk this way, well, the left hand now is here, and my body is again blocking the signal. So this is again quite important to understand. Okay, so... Again, this doesn't matter if it's the air check. This could be with any tool you want. The same uh, methodology and techniques apply. And that's exactly what I covered here. So in this image, I was walking away from the access point, and it was a negative 79. And then when I walked towards the building, it became a negative 74. So my body, plus distance, plus some other factors, knocked it down negative 5 dB, which in this case was enough to make it gray. Okay. So pros and cons. So it provides a ton of information uh, that that portal does. I just wish you could filter on much more than what Link Live currently offers. I'm sure it's a work in progress and they will update it accordingly, but right now I find it a little bit limited. Great form factor. So the tool's nice, it fits good in my hand. It's got a good battery life. I would really like being able to recharge it just by plugging it in an ethernet port with PoE. That'd be pretty cool. Right now I need to always carry the AC adapter with me uh, which is just one more thing to bring along. You know how that is. It does come with a little case, so you can know, keep it all together, but, you know, nevertheless. Air Mapper interface is quite easy to use. Loading maps from the USB is helpful, so you basically take that snippet, put it on a USB key, plug it in, import the map, off you go. What I would like, though, is if you had the ability to copy the maps from my computer to the unit. So forget, skip the USB thing, right? So if I plug in a micro USB connector between the actual unit and my laptop, just drag it over, you know, make it look like some local storage, and that would have been kind of neat. Link Life is very intuitive and easy to use, and, and what's neat about Link Live with this tool is when you hit save, it goes, it says Link Live, but if you don't have internet connectivity, it doesn't matter, it just queues it up. And the next time you're near a network connection, plug in the ethernet, and off you go to the races, okay? I wish you could customize the display uh, like RSSI and other values on the map. So right now it's kind of green and, you know, I'm going to say greenish, yellowish, that kind of thing, and gray. It'd be nice if you could just click some areas and have the numbers stay on the map instead of having it hover. Uh, to me, that's awesome because then later on I could just do a screenshot of that and throw it in my report instead of having to do that step manually. And I like the ability to save that link live offline and then obviously plug it in later. What I did notice is, and I don't know if it's just me or the tool itself, the limitation in the tool, uh, when I'm ready to save it, if my unit has Wi-Fi connectivity and it's configured properly and it could go to the internet, I really wish the link live could have just gone through the Wi-Fi connector because all I found recently is that I have to plug in a wired connection into the unit to upload my stuff to the cloud. The export feature definitely needs some work. For example, when you export the survey, the image is small, right? It's, it's a PDF, but it's like a little tiny corner of it. Um, it should at least be set to fit, you know, the page width or the page height or just automatic something or other. Um, you know, little things like that. All, all in all, it's a really good tool. I, I give it like, a, I don't know, eight out of 10. It's pretty, pretty good. I just think that it's got a little ways to go. And again, all these little tips and tricks, you can use any tool you want to do the same thing. If you want me to do this the longhand way with just my phone, piece of paper, and show you how to do this manually, let me know, and I'll do another presentation for you. All right, folks? Well, there you go. Have a good day. Bye for now.